Happy New Year and welcome to the first video of 2023 where we're going to cover the number one key to fat loss and achieving any other goal in general really and that is your attitude. Quite a short video this week but it is a very important topic because without a healthy attitude it's actually really hard to achieve anything. So we're going to cover what a healthy versus unhealthy attitude looks like and then we're going to go over a few ways just to check where you're at and see if you can harness this in a way that will serve you throughout the year and ensure you have a lot of success. So without a good attitude, you can't achieve anything meaningful. And I'm saying this after observing hundreds and hundreds of women over the years on mindset journeys, training, fat loss and body transformation journeys and athletes as well. So the number one thing that helps people stay on track and achieve their dreams is the way that they perceive and approach the things it is that they want. So I'm not saying that you need to have a positive attitude all the time. It's not like that because we need to leave room for positive and negative in every single situation. Otherwise, we're just not being realistic about the human experience. But what you do need to ensure that you have is an objective and a optimistic attitude, which just means that you can look at yourself honestly, you can look at your behavior honestly, and you can also believe that things are going to be better for you in the future. And you just keep striving towards that. So you need to be prepared for setbacks that come along the way. And you need to be hyper prepared for the fact that setbacks are going to come along the way. So to give you a bit of context is what I mean by a bad attitude. And we're just saying, and it's not so much that it is bad. It's just the fact that it is not going to help you in achieving your goals. But in a fat loss context, what it would look like is throwing attention when your weight doesn't drop, binging because you're not getting results fast enough, being dishonest about how closely you're actually following the program, blaming other people for your slip ups, you know, like your friends and your family or lying to yourself about your level of readiness or commitment. So those kinds of things are what come up, which actually stops people from getting anywhere on a fat loss journey. And even if you do make progress, you're way more likely to spring back to where you started when you're done because you weren't all in with your mindset in the beginning. So I'm not judging any of these things because I coach people through it. I was this person. This is why I know all about this. No, but I'm just kind of giving you that blatant honesty because without that, it's really hard to make progress and sugarcoating things does not help anybody. So with honesty, accountability, we can actually start making progress and get off the hamster wheel for good. And the other thing when it comes to fat loss is it requires a discipline, focus, consistent jumping back on the wagon because you will fall off, setbacks and a willingness to ride the ups and downs. So why do we need to fix our attitude? Why is it so important? I'll explain a few of the things that you might not have thought about that do come along with the fat loss journey that might help you understand why having the right attitude is actually so important. And the first one is that you will lose your emotional crutch. So if you're somebody who eats to regulate your emotions, you eat when you're happy, you eat when you're sad, you graze all day, you know, the highlight of your day is your eating. If you go on a diet, you are going to lose that crutch. So you're using that to balance yourself out and now you can't. Okay, so what are you gonna use instead? Can you handle your emotions when they come up? This is something you really need to consider. For most people, eating is an addiction. So if you go on a very strict diet, you no longer have that addictive behavior to help you regulate yourself. So you would need to be ready with a healthy attitude to face those emotions head on, process them some other way, to find another way to work with them, you know, or maybe even get professional support. If emotional eating is an actual problem for you, there's probably a very strong emotional undertone behind that, which is actually getting in the way of you getting anywhere. And the next consideration is that you will not lose weight every week. So there will be weeks where you will go up in weight. There will be weeks when you come down. There will be multiple weeks in a row where you might make no visible progress. So this is totally normal. Let's just say you do kind of hit the ground running and go really well. There is a period of time when your body will stall. It's a natural metabolic process. The body wants to balance itself out and it will put up stops to prevent you from losing more fat. So the trick of fat loss is to be able to navigate those. That's what someone like I do for a living is work out how to navigate that in somebody's body in order to keep the ball rolling. But if somebody loses their mind in this process, they actually end up going backwards and it makes it way harder for them to continue successfully down the path. And the next consideration is that you need to keep your stress low. So if your attitude is not right, your stress is gonna be high and you are not going to lose fat either. 
You need to set boundaries around your friends and family. You need to set permanent boundaries around your food. So if, let's just say you have a nine to five, Monday to Friday, and they constantly have morning teas with cakes and everything. There's a, you know, there's Cadbury favorites on your desk all the time. You need to have the right attitude around this so that you don't keep grabbing those things. So you're not leaning on those things and that you can actually sit there and not eat them and actually be okay. You know, and that's hard, it's really hard work. That's why most of us struggle to do this because junk food is everywhere. So you need to be remembering as well. You'll go to the supermarket, you'll go to the cafe to get a coffee, you'll go to your friend's house, you'll be going to work. You've got all these things where food is the central focus. So you need to be able to say no, 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 no. That you can follow a diet that involves a little bit of those things, but not so much that you don't get results. So, you know, that's a tricky piece too. And you need to have lots of patience. So as a client said to me in her check-in this morning, you know, I have to remember this is a marathon, not a sprint. It is a marathon. It's a lifestyle change. It's a long-term thing. You can't just lose weight really quick and keep it off without changing anything in the long term. That's not how it works. Okay, so it's a little bit more complicated than maybe what you think. That's why I wanted to highlight those things. And this is why you need a healthy attitude when you approach this process. So now that we've kind of covered that, let's go on to what can you do to ensure you have the right attitude before you start the process. So there's a few steps, just a couple of things to reflect on, and hopefully that will help you. So the first one is make sure you feel ready. So this is kind of a somatic process where you'll get in touch with yourself. Think about the dieting process. Try close your eyes, feel into your body, Ask yourself, am I ready to do this? If you get a hard no, you know, it is not a signal to diet. So what a lot of people will do is try and use their mind to decide everything. So they'll go, I want to diet. I don't feel ready, but I want to. And they think that their mind power is going to be stronger than their body. It never will be. Like your body holds so much information and it has so much power and it operates unconsciously and you will not be able to overpower that. So you want to feel like you are ready. And if you're not, then you want to start working towards building that readiness. And there are a few truths that you do need to accept in order to do that. Like knowing it's a lifestyle, knowing the food's everywhere, knowing you're going to have to say no all the time, setting boundaries with your friends. There's all these things that you need to feel into and make sure that you're ready to actually do those things. Okay, so make sure you feel ready. And then you want to build an understanding of how it's really going to work. People that create these diets, they know that you don't know how physiology works. You don't know how the metabolism works. You don't understand safety mechanisms within the body. You don't know these things. We didn't learn it in school. Why would you know? And funny enough, it was not covered in my naturopathy studies. It is something that we learned in practice in the bodybuilding world. So the whole concept of metabolic damage, metabolic repair, rebounds, all of these things have actually been learned in practice by people who coach in body composition. That is where it came from. It is not from dietetics. It's not from nutrition. It's not from naturopathy. It is not a part of the educational curriculum at all. And just to highlight that, if you think about how many fad diets have been around, there's probably not a female anywhere. I've probably met one or two in my entire life who have not tried a fad diet, at least one. And we have an obesity epidemic, right? So they don't work. You gotta wipe it out of your head. There's no such thing as just getting fat loss over with and then staying there without changing your lifestyle doesn't exist. The body's way too clever. And anything that is that easy, that is pursued time and time again, like zero positive result in the long term, you know, there's a lot of evidence there to show you that they don't work. Okay, so get a coach, ask a friend who's had a successful journey, find out what it really looks like, get educated on what it looks like, then see if you're ready for it. So these are all little things that you can do to ensure that you're going to have the right attitude. Because if you go into something like this blindly, you don't have the right attitude because you're actually going to be shocked by how the process really works. And thirdly, you want to choose a time period for your diet, which has minimal setbacks. Just understand that you can't lose fat if you're cheating all the time, if you're at parties all the time, if you're not able to sleep, if there's a very high stress time in your life, fat loss is not going to happen. It's also probably not going to happen if you can't track your food correctly. So the exception to this would be that if you were, say, overweight and you had never tried a diet in your life, minimal lifestyle changes will lead to fat loss. So I'm talking about people that have trouble losing weight and find themselves on this hamster wheel all the time. And another thing is you can't really diet if you have a holiday coming up, for example. Let's pretend you're going to Spain in eight weeks and you think, cool, I'm going to try and lose eight kilos in eight weeks and then I'm going to go to Spain. First of all, you're not going to lose eight kilos. You might lose three or four. 
And second of all, if you then go to Spain, I'm assuming you don't have any intention of tracking your food while you're there and you're probably gonna enjoy all the beautiful Spanish food. And I guarantee you that when you get back, you'll be exactly the same weight you were when you started the whole process because your body is hypersensitive at the end of the diet and it will be aiming to regain back everything that you have lost. So just know that with any successful fat loss phase, there's also a repairing phase. So you're negatively impacting the metabolism as you diet and you need to positively impact it after you diet. And then you can kind of go off on this intuitive eating approach where you can kind of do whatever you want and you might only gain a little bit of the weight back and you will gain a little bit. That is normal. That's what the body's going to do to try and adjust itself. But so long as you don't go back to your old lifestyle, you won't end up being where you were when you started. So you need consistent accuracy, minimal setbacks, and also time after the dieting period to recover your metabolism in order to lose fat and keep it off. And fourthly, you want to accept that it is a lifestyle. So the way that you live now, the way that you eat now, the way that you sleep now, the way that you behave, all of these things are contributing to how your body looks and feels in this moment. So if you want to change that, then that change has to stick. That is why you can't just do like a shake diet and then go back to normal and have the fat loss state. It won't. It'll all come back on because whatever you did in the first place is exactly why you are the way you are. And remembering we all have different genetics. So sometimes people have horrendous lifestyles and they're slim. And then people have really strict lifestyles where they're really healthy and diligent and they're not as slim. This is normal. It's working out, all right, my lifestyle and my genetics have me like this. If I'm gonna change something about myself, I have to accept this and I have to make changes in my lifestyle. So you might have to go from being strict to really strict, whereas somebody else might just have to take out alcohol. You know, everyone's different. It's totally unfair. <laughs> This is how biology works. We're all very individual in that way. But at the end of the day, you personally have to change your lifestyle in the long term in order for any result to stick. So just to recap those things that I just mentioned, in order to ensure you have the right attitude before starting a fat loss process, you want to firstly feel into whether you are actually ready, feel into your body, see what it says, yes or no. If it's a no, don't diet. If it's a yes, go for it. Secondly, build an understanding of how it actually works. Thirdly, choose a time with minimal setbacks. And the longer period of time this is, the better. And four, accept that this is actually a permanent change to your lifestyle. And lastly, before we end the video, I just wanna make a comment about the fact that if you are not ready to diet, please don't diet. And I really wanna drill that into your head that it's actually not that easy to lose weight. And there are no easy ways to lose weight and keep it off. So unless you are ready, your frequent attempts at losing fat, like your half-baked attempts at losing fat, are just going to prime your body for more fat gain. That is a biological process that the body has ingrained in it and you can't override it. Okay, so the less dieting you do, the healthier your metabolism is going to be. And the healthier you eat in general, the healthier your metabolism is going to be. The more stress you put your body under, the more times you diet, the more junk food you eat. All of these things are going to make it harder for you to diet when you actually are ready. So if you're not ready, I would just suggest making small changes. So working towards that healthier eating, the more consistent eating, less alcohol, less junk food and working on your emotional stuff or whatever it is that's kind of got you stuck in this place where you want to lose fat, but you're not actually ready. You know, because then that ensures that you do have the right attitude when you are ready. And then you'll have lots and lots of success. So that's all I have for this week's video. Any questions, pop in the comments below and I will see you next week.